Bosses of Reddit, what did your new employee do that made you instantly regret hiring them? They were loudly taking a phone call while waiting to be interviewed. Taking a call is not a total deal breaker by itself, but the call was her coaching the friend into getting fired so she could get unemployment. I didn't hire her, but after I left I think someone else did. This reads like an episode of Sunny. Couldn't figure out how to log into email with step by step directions on the first day. Needed step by step directions every day for everything on the computer. Me day 3. Did you double click outlook icon? Him. Oh yeah. Now what do I do? Me. Type in your password. Him. What's my password? Me. You picked your password the first day. That's why it's called a password. Only you know it. Him. Oh yeah. Proceeds to sit there for 15 minutes doing nothing because he doesn't know his password. I'm usually pretty gentle when I fire someone. He wanted to argue he was computer literate during his termination meeting. You keep using that word. I give out a daily summary of unresolved cases and new cases yet to be answered. I handwrite some notes on it as well. On her second day, she asked why her score went down. Confused, I asked her what she meant. Yesterday I got a 10 stroke 12 but today only 10 stroke 13. The date. I mean, at least she knows fractions and understands 10 stroke 12 is greater than 10 stroke 13, and like a good amount of America, which apparently believes 1 stroke 4 is greater than 1 stroke 3. I had a new guy to train in my job where we installed TVs and various other electronics in expensive houses. I had a small part in hiring him, and even though he wasn't from our industry he seemed to have good skills in related fields and seemed to be willing to learn what he needed to. Our first two weeks were spent finishing up a really nice theater. House was completely finished and it was pleasant easy and or clean work. Then we moved on to the next job and had to wire the house which involved crawling through the attic and underneath the floors pulling new wires. I turned to this guy and told him to take these 5 wires down underneath the house and crawl them to the other side. He looked at me like I had 3 heads and said what? No way. I am not going under there. I was taken aback. This is a huge part of the job and he had to have known that when he was hired. After a couple minutes of talking to him, it was clear he had no intention of doing any dirty work. He ended up going out and sitting in the work van pouting. I called our manager, and when we drove back to the office at the end of the day his final check was waiting for him. He was completely stunned, and got really upset, trying to blame me as his trainer for setting him up and making him do stuff that no one would ever want to do. I didn't get to see the final encounter myself. But it became the talk of the company for a while. Apparently he never managed to get it through his head that we all had to do that type of work and I wasn't singling him out. He blamed me in the company for him losing his job all the way out the door. Apparently he also tried lying to the unemployment office and got shut down hard when my manager explained why he was let go and he corroborated it. Still assuming that we were in the wrong for asking him to do that type of work. To be fair, retrofits are the worst downloaded and stole all of our email company info and prices and took them to the competitor. We sued the crap out of him and won, though. That's a very very dumb thing to do. Not a boss but, guy got hired as my swamper. I used to deliver cabinets in a one ton truck throughout the area. Boss says, got a good for you, he's big and strong, seems nice. What a great change from the scrawny 18 year olds he was usually hiring to help me. That would work for 3 days and quit because it was too physically demanding. He starts, first hour, we are driving to the site. He's bragging about the M he did last night. The girls that he got to kiss him at the club. He's married with a toddler. Second hour, at site. He's asking if I can pick him up for work every day. If he gives me 25 bucks a week, was fair. He didn't live far from the shop. Third hour, he's asking to borrow 100 bucks until payday. I decline and say I never lend money to co-workers. By the end of our 8 hour day, he had gotten lunch, a pack of cigarettes, and promises to be picked up dropped off every day. I get it when you start a new job, sometimes you're short on money. It happens, I've mooched cigarettes off people in my first weeks too. Two weeks go by, hasn't paid me a cent for gas, kept promising once he get paid he'll pay me everything at once. Third week goes by, gets first paycheck, but only for one week. Week hold back rules, 
he gives me 10 bucks and 2 cigarettes from his pack that he just bought himself. Fourth week, tell him if he doesn't pay me the gas money today, he's finding his own rides. He responds by saying, fine, it'll just walk anyways. Next day, 30 minutes late because, you 6s and 7s wasn't there to pick me up, so I had to walk. I tell boss to fire this frick head, he does, I've been here for a while at this point, he needs me to be happy. Guy comes to me saying, I hope you know you're taking food off of my toddler's plate, just some food for thought. I tell him to go frick himself, run into him and his wife a couple months later, comes to me, hands me 100 bucks cash, says, sorry for how I acted, I was high on coke for most of that, you think you can get me a job again. I laugh and say no, I wasn't going to put my butt on the line for him after how he treated our company, asks for the 100 bucks back, tell him sure, hand it back, ask him if he has food for his baby, wife looks confused, they didn't have a baby, just a way to get money out of concerned people, frick you Tyler. A friend of mine works at a construction recruitment agency and recently told me a great story. His colleague got a phone call in the office from a client, the foreman of a large construction site, who immediately began to scream at him to come to the site and collect a laborer from the agency who was on his first day working there. It transpired that this young, shabby temp had left the tracked excavator he was supposed to be operating to find the foreman and demand the socket set to remove the excavator's seat, as he dropped his phone under it and couldn't reach it. The foreman told him to frick off and get back to work and that he could try to retrieve his phone at the end of the day once he was off the clock. Phones weren't allowed on site anyway. After a shouting match, the laborer stormed off, climbed into the neighboring excavator and used its bucket to rip the cab off his machine to get to his phone. Needless to say, the agency took him off its books. Best story here. What's the company policy on fighting he was totally serious to? When told he can't, he asked what about in the parking lot? I have a feeling he will show up in our I am for Ribidus. I once worked with someone who was an absolute waste of space. My boss said he was going to promote him. I told him not it's a bad idea. After 3 months of training the guy became a manager. Then on his first shift alone stole all the cash from the day's sales. I wasn't even mad. I smiled when my boss told me. Don't know what you guys do but I'm really struggling to think of what kind of payout that was to make stealing from people who have your security number and address on file worth it. I hope my former boss doesn't comment about his employee that made two espressos when someone asked for a double espresso. I regret being myself guys I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure it's a barista rite of passage to make the wrong drink. We hired a bench technician to do electronics repair. The first job I asked his help with was to extend a comb cable. Three conductors. Easy peasy. Cut the cable. Splice an X amount of new wire. Done. He comes back to me an hour later with the original cable. Cut in two. Then spliced back together. Without adding anything to it. Instead of extending it, all he did was cut it and put it back together. And it took him an hour. Ran an in-home senior care business, hired a chick and she got a sweet butt gig. 9-5, steady work, great easy going family and easily cared for elderly lady. All she had to do was wear scrubs, not tank tops and shorty shorts. That's it. One weekend was when that changed. We also found out that she brought a catalog of stuff to sell to the person she was caring for. Ended up selling her like $500 worth of crap. Luckily we were able to stop it in time. Only person we ever had to actually fire. Everyone else lost their client or just quit. I didn't directly hire him but we once had a new employee shadow me since I was the stock manager and on day one he bragged to me about how much coke he had done the night before. The store manager was about 5 feet away and I simply looked over the new guy's shoulder and shook my head. He was gone soon after. He wasn't immediately let go because at the time we really needed the seasonal help but even so it only took a couple shifts of being late and smelling like pot for him to be dealt with. I used to work retail relatively close to a college town so it's not unusual to have employees hungover etc. I had just assumed that was the case. Mentioned in smaller talk that I myself was a little hungover and he just stops and goes oh dude let me tell you about this party and continued on into his cacostravaganza of a night. 
throughout the day he had been making frequent trips to the bathroom and told me it was because his nose kept bleeding. I now knew why. Several months later he came back to reapply for his old job because the store was under new management. I don't think he realized that I was part of that new management or he had assumed I was just cool with it. I wasn't dude half assed his job regardless of the drugs. I also have reason to believe he snuck off on his lunch break to smoke pot. I don't have a problem with it. I'm a bit of a stoner myself but I just don't bring it to work. I guess the boss was a Pepsi fan. On his second day, responded to an email complaint about our customer service. My boss told him to respond to the email. He responded by pretty much telling the customer off, without having anyone read or approve of it first. Idiot didn't last very long. But bless his soul for doing what everyone who's worked customer service has wanted to do, but knew better. Someone's gotta do it. Oh my good buddy Simeon. Got hired right out of school for a basic sales job. Two weeks in most of the offices at a convention. I left the office early to finish off the day from home. On me. I am in tech and could work from home no problem. Should not have left him alone. Day finished out and nothing big happens. Following Monday security stops me as I am walking in the building to ask about what we did to this kid after he got caught. Caught doing what? Well. It turns out Simeon decided to take a break after I left for the day. He went and bought a six pack and broke onto the roof of the building to drink beers and tan. We are in an 11 story building. On either side of us are 15 plus story buildings. Simeon decided to strip down to his underwear and tan on the roof. Drinking beers and smoking joints. Security catches him. He blows smoke in the guard's face and tells him to frick off. Gets kicked off the property. Remember, none of us in the office heard anything about this. Simeon was sick and had worked from home the rest of that week. Eventually the building contacts our HR department, and Simeon is given a warning. He is somehow allowed on the property again and is told he has two strikes against him now. He had consistently been showing up over an hour late each day. Next day Simeon shows up at noon for a 9-5 job. He calls in first to see if it is okay to come in, he slept through 6 alarms. Manager says sure, come on in. Simeon arrives and is finally fired on the spot. Craziest hire fire I have ever seen. Classic Simeon. Entered the clean room without the proper attire. So we had to stop production and bleach about 6 rooms. He was union. So I didn't really have a choice in hiring him. But luckily was able to make sure he was not retained in our department. I feel like right now I'm that new employee. Day 1. Relative died. Delayed my start by 2 days. Day 5. Husband of relative died was offered compassionate leave. Day 13. Girlfriend fell down the stairs and needed to go to hospital. Day 15. I had a pre-booked holiday. Another day off. Day 16. GF's passport stolen in another country. Missed our train home. Weather prevented us traveling that entire day. Day 17. Arrived 2 hours late after having to travel across Europe before work. Day 36. Boiler explodes during the night and need to sit around for an emergency plumber who then takes all day to fix it. I really swear it's all the bad luck at once but even I know it sounds so unrealistically far fetched at this point. Hopefully your job is understanding. I had a new job once and then got super sick. At the end of the month my manager told me I missed more days than I showed up but she was willing to give me a chance. Showed her. She made me head supervisor within 2 months. Keep working hard. I didn't hire them thankfully. But I did work at a call center with a couple that got hired into different divisions. He went to work in sales. And she went into customer service. This isn't all that unusual by itself. What happened next though? Ro. Their plan from the start was to see how quickly each of them could get let go after they'd started their medical benefits, which kicked in around the 90 day mark, so they were both fairly exemplary. During that time, they both began talking to co-workers in their divisions about their off work time, internet habits, etc. Eventually they started canvassing their respective divisions with business cards advertising their p-site, and inviting people to join. Apparently they did this pretty frequently. Get a job to get medical insurance, then plot to get let go so they could draw unemployment and continue to keep medical insurance going via Cobra. In the meantime, they'd get as many of their doctor and dental visits as they could scheduled. Then, 
they drum up interest in their PCAM site, because by then they'd have gotten to know a ton of people, and who doesn't want to see the hot girl guy at the office having sex. They were both very attractive. Even the managers involved in this clusterfuck of a plan had to admit that the angles on all this were exceptionally slick. And because Phoenix is rife with call centers, they were able to work their way up and down a certain area of town without any of the respective businesses becoming the wiser. This is a movie I'd watch. He antagonized every single female co-worker. It was like his only way of communicating with anybody of the opposite sex was to be demeaning and constantly using facetious tones to undermine them. Luckily, these weren't the reserved gals he was used to at his private college. He learned this the hard way after making a joke about one of the senior members lunch being too small and to eat a sandwich. She barked back and he did not return the next day. Kudos to the lady in question. Asked me permission to use the bathroom, every time, in spite of my protestations that he was an adult who I trusted to make his own decisions about going to the lav. He also sent me a weekly spreadsheet of all his breaks, potty and otherwise, lunches, and arrival and departure times. This is in no way required or the norm in our workplace. Finally, after multiple pleas from me he stopped doing that. He was very smart and very skilled. But this was the first indication that he would otherwise be a lot of work. Sounds like he came from a home or former job that micromanaged far too much. I hired someone for a moving company I was with 7 years ago, based near Milwaukee, WI. On his first day he was supposed to take the company car and drive to Madison, WI. He didn't show up. Fired him on the way to his job. I bet your company sees a lot of turnover started asking me for advice about men, not just a little, I'm talking detailed advice, like, I text him this and he text me that, what does he mean by that, should I text him back, do you think he's done with me, sadly, said employee is not nearly as young as you might guess, recently divorced after being married for a long time from a very young age is my guess, worked at a small catering company in college, got a friend a job bartending at a small wedding, Friend is excited and I'm surprised to find he's a no call no show the next day. I call him to ask why he isn't in and in slurred speech goes. Oh crap. Our fraternity was hosting the Olympics at the house and forgot. I'm pretty drunk but I'll be over in 10. He hung up before I could object and I decided I'm not the best judge of character. Obligatory not me. But, this bloke shows up on his first day. The foreman has a picture on his phone of a girl he's showing the guys. New guy proceeds, in graphic detail, to say what he'd like to do to the girl. The girl was the foreman's 13 year old daughter. He was summarily dismissed. For context, it was a pic of her holding up a fish she'd caught. Lucky he didn't get put in a casket. I had an employee that slept overnight in the office, as he had a fight with his girlfriend, and then he used the fuel card from the company car, for going to locations to fix IT equipment to fill petrol cans, apparently for personal use. I wasn't the one who hired him, but he reports to me. So three days after he started working, he sends out an email to a very important client, and his signature has my position. Needless to say he got into deep crap with management. I didn't hire them, and I couldn't fire them, but I was in charge of making sure they got fired with a quickness. Had an augmenting wage mariner show up to the ship where I was executive officer. I, and the rest of the wardroom, are in uniform. Crew is not they are civilian and union. Guy is a general vessel assistant, GVA, for the engineering department. Meaning, he is the lowest paid, lowest ranked guy on the ship. Able to be tasked with working for any department for basic level jobs. Cleaning, chipping, painting, wiping, loading and loading all those unlovely tasks that must get done. He was tasked with mopping and cleaning up after work was done on the piping for our marine sanitation device. Shitter was broken. Nasty work. But we can't have sewage effluent on the deck. He had the nerve to come up and be to one of my junior officers that he was mopping poo. And the J.O. was getting to sit in AC and inventory movies. The J.O. is an officer. And doing a job he was tasked with. All new jobs get a stint as movie officer it sucks. Because you are in charge of several hundred movies. All tightly controlled because of copyright issues. 
and doing a good job of it so I didn't have to worry about it. And this guy, who was prior service navy, had the hotspot to come up and complain he was making overtime. $18 HR, for cleaning crap. I know people who would line up to get full bennies and make $18 HR for whatever I told them to mop. The guy was a shit chow. He legitimately wondered why we weren't using him as a ship's photographer, because apparently that was his naval background. Well, Skippy, that's because the job description is really very plainly laid out. You sail on a ship, and maintain the ship. That's specifically what you were hired for. A dirty birdie who'd leave the head, bathroom, a wet, unflushed mess. He drove roommates to distraction. He even refused to use ship's linen, provided, and slept in oily work gear on the bare mattress. Ugh. I went through heck making the purchase order for those new mattresses and you're going to put your rank butt engine room coated self directly on it? Fortunately, he was on a probationary period. I documented everything, and let the folks running our augmenting pool know he was a safety disaster waiting to happen. My regret was thankfully never repeated, as they took the hint and let him pursue other avenues of employment. On his first week, he won a prepaid credit card for performance, sales job. Hours after I personally had given him the gift card, one of my managers advises me that he's been smearing his fesses and drawing swastikas with them in the men's washroom. I terminated him, awkward to say the least. Before it's asked, we had cameras outside the public washrooms that allowed us to identify the person doing it. He went through an agency, then through my boss, the threw me for an interview. Couldn't tell. Very well spoken but still broken English. Had the perfect answer for our interview questions. First week he works. He asked some questions that literally he answered in the interview. I gave him a pass because I thought maybe he forgot something really specific about the software he was questioning. Over the first month it's disgustingly obvious he lied on his resume and in his interview. We're talking someone who claims to be proficient in Microsoft Office but doesn't know what Excel is for an example. Dude got paid a ton for 4 months of crap work. Probably had someone else interview for him if it was a phone or video interview. Happens all the time. A company my mom worked in, begged for a job, was told job demanded flexibility time wise from his side. Frist Friday he informed his sub rear that he would now leave, after working for an hour, because there was a football match that he wanted to see and left continue to ask questions that I have already answered. I want people to ask any and every question they have, but please don't make me continue to repeat myself. I'm not a boss, but one of my major work frustrations right now is this. People who have been doing their jobs 2 plus years cannot seem to recall day 1 stuff and others need to be told how to handle stuff they've done a dozen times before every single time they do it. I swear they all have a sign that tells them too. Find me if they have literally any questions about any topic. I took a guy out for his first day of training. He didn't listen to a word I said and just kept trying to give me advice and train me. God I trained a bee like that once. The entire time I heard about how we should really do it this way versus that way because she had a culinary degree that's fantastic Taylor. But if you were worth your salt you and your degree would still be working at a high end restaurant that fire you and not in a nursing home kitchen. My dad works for a small heating AC company and is the supervisor for all the servicemen. Meaning he is in charge of hiring and firing new technicians. And making sure all the guys keep on top of their paperwork. I remember him talking about a new guy earlier this year who he claimed was just awful. I think his name was Kenny. He said anytime a guy goes out on a call, afterwards they have to fill out paperwork stating what was completed and when. And the paperwork is due to the office within 2 days of when that particular job was completed. Kenny would not do his paperwork 4 weeks at a time, and not until my dad hounded him about it. I remember my dad saying for one job, a week went by where he had told Kenny every single day to do the paperwork, and he never did it. He wanted to fire Kenny because this had happened multiple times, but he has to run all decisions by the owner before he fires someone, and the owner kept telling him to give Kenny another chance. He eventually did get fired, but it was due to failing a drug test. He failed once and my dad confronted him about it. Kenny begged to be allowed to retake it, claiming there had to be some mistake, so he was given another chance. Now when their company does drug tests, they are allowed to go to a clinic of their choice within the allotted time. 
So for his second drug test, Kenny allegedly brought in a handwritten note from a doctor that just said Kenny passed his drug test with the doctor's signature. No paperwork, no test results faxed to the company, just a handwritten note. So the owner asked Kenny for the contact info for the doctor so they could call and speak with him. When they called, it was a random number and they had no idea who Kenny was. So the owner confronted Kenny, and he confessed that he wrote the note himself because he knew he couldn't pass a drug test. So my dad was then allowed to fire him. Finally, the whole story was so absurd that it's laughable. Didn't hire this kid but I was his foreman. Day 1 I have him gluing together some PVC pipes using an extremely runny, very toxic purple primer chemical. Safety glasses are mandatory. I look over. He's gluing these pipes above directly above his head. Glasses off. And the chemical has a very low viscosity so it's running down the underside of the pipe and about to drop right in his face and eyes. I yell over for him to stop and step away, and explain that he could have been permanently blinded. He proceeds to freak the frick out on me, and yell about how I'm not speaking to him in a respectful manner. I'm freaking flabbergasted at this point, but I calmly tell him that he was in imminent danger, and to get his goddamn glasses on. At this point he's already used up all his strikes with me, but it's not my call. Okay, like a half hour later, despite me trying to keep an eye on him, he comes up to me with his mouth and lips stained with this primer liquid, and he's laughing about how he accidentally got it in his mouth. I'm totally lost for words. I've already explained to him that this crap for sure can give you cancer, but he thinks it's a huge joke. Anyway he lasted a couple months so many more stories. Finally I just went ballistic on him one day and that was that. An old boss of mine once told me about the best interviewee he ever had. He talked about her like he was blown away and she was presenting herself as potentially the best hire he'd ever have. The job was a cashier position. She came in on her first day and got fired because she did not know how to count change. At least in American currency. He felt pretty bad about it but couldn't afford to spend time training her and making sure she wasn't screwing up. It was a small store with lots of customers. Many of which had short fuses. I worked on the human resources team at a target. I was the primary person that handled phone screens to determine who was worthy of calling in for in-person interviews with department heads but one day in November I was out sick so one of my HR teammates schedules this one girl to come in. It was the holiday season so if they made it past the phone screen they were most likely hired for seasonal work. This angel somehow slips through the cracks and gets hired to be a seasonal cashier. On a team member's first day, they have to take a few of quizzes and training modules depending on their department so they can legally work for the store. Even for the departments with the most in-depth training, it should take 1-2 hours depending before you go train with your associates. She's a cashier and has maybe 5-10 minute, multiple choice quizzes to take. She doesn't finish the training until 4 hours into her 6 hour shift. When her first official cashier shift is scheduled, she doesn't show up. Instead of calling out ahead of time with an excuse of sickness or emergency, she calls 3 hours after her shift was to start and said her baby daddy didn't want to drive her in the rain. She asked if she could talk to the head of guest services about making up the time later that week. Coincidentally, her department head was in the office when she called and took the call on speaker. The words that came out of this girl's mouth when he swiftly fired her over the phone would make Samuel L. Jackson blush. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.